Good evening. I'm aware that most of you don't know me, so I thought I'd share something about me um, with 60-something total strangers. Why not? Um, I, I'm a third culture kid. Um, my, my genes, these ones, not these ones, um, would say that I'm Anglo-Irish. My birth certificate says that I was born in Greenwich. Are you from Greenwich? No. <laughs> Good taste. <laughs> and um, my, my accent with its overly long vowels would suggest that I was raised around the Aldershot area. Um, but culturally, I'm a third culture kid. So as a child, I was moving and moving and moving and moving because the army was my mother and my father. That's one other parent to take to therapy. Um, that's the theme of the night, isn't it? Um, and um, I wonder why we all do stand up comedy. And so, um, there, there are two things, if you've met any other third culture kids that you might recognise, is that we tend to roll our eyes when being asked, where do you come from? Um, and also, we tend to communicate in a much more um, straightforward or blunt way than others, perhaps. Um, and I found it quite difficult, don't worry, the comedy's coming. I found it quite difficult <laughs> looking and sounding British, but not knowing how to fit in with British behaviour, if, if, if you see what I mean. So, for example, even as a child, people come up to me and say, hello, how are you? And I look up and go, e e my doctor. Um, which, I'm told, comes across as quite aggressive. So, I've done some work on myself in, um, in therapy, lots of therapy, and, and these days I'll often say, much more politely I think, I don't feel comfortable answering that question, how else could I connect with you? <laughs> which seems to invoke some kind of referral by HR, or people and cattles as they're called these days, to the autism specialist. I'm not autistic, I'm a third culture kid. Um, it kind of irks me, sorry if you do this, it does irk me when people say it as one phrase, how, hi, how are you, and they're walking off. <laughs> so to prove a point, that's no enough. So to prove a point, I've followed people, I've chased after them, saying, how am I, I feel abandoned, you've left me, just like all my school friends have left me. Oh no, but the correct answer, of course, is, I'm fine, I've learned that. No matter what's actually going on, I'm meant to say, I'm fine, true, isn't it? So, you know, I've been dumped again, happens a lot, um, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Single, hello. Um, or, or um, you know, the dog's died, fine. Or, I'm petrified, bearing my soul to, ooh, 60 plus strangers. I'm fine, I, I get it, you're a couple. <laughs> I, I respect boundaries. Um, more on that, more on that in a minute. Um, the other thing is, is the greeting, you know the email greeting at work? I have, I have lots of colleagues and some strangers email me saying, Dear Jay, hope you are well. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not unhappy with being wished well, but isn't that another 10 seconds you could do other stuff with your time with? And I started getting a bit paranoid recently. What is it that all these colleagues and strangers know that they're all asking me, wishing me well. <laughs> so how's about this? Look, what if, what if I can just be neutral with emails? I don't wish people well, and if I'm upset, I will wish, you know, plague and pestilence or something. <laughs> um, and so it, it also just doesn't match. Sometimes I've gotten upset emails from people, and I've had, for example, Dear Jay, hope you are well. I'm concerned about the quality of your case notes. Please see me urgently. Kind of regards. <laughs> just, just be blunt, please. Or, or let me be blunt. Um, speaking of which, I thought this would be a really, really good um, shortcut at work. So if the correct answer for everything is fine, it makes my job so much easier. I work in mental health. Um, as a therapist. It's a great conversation killer at parties. Don't tell anybody. £75 an hour bargain. Um, when was I? Yeah, and so to ask somebody how are you takes two hours and 34 pages because it's called a comprehensive initial assessment. But this got so much easier when I realised that the answer is always fine. George is, if you're called George. It's not you. <laughs> Substance use. George spends forty pounds per day on crack, twenty pounds a day on heroin, which is fine. 
mental health, Jules suffers from anxiety, depression, and PTSD. George is fine. <laughs> Criminal justice, George has a restraining order taken up by his former partner. You know how the rule of three, three works, George is fine. Um, <laughs> which led to somehow getting in trouble at work. However, I know to say, how's work going? Work is fine. Um, the, the other thing, I thought that gave a bigger laugh. The, the other thing <laughs> is that in supermarkets, I've never understood um, all these, these half sentences. Do you remember back in the day when chip and pin was a thing? Who remembers chip and pin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're, we're all of a similar enough demography. Fine. Um, Zach might not. He's gone home to cry. Um, <laughs> Um, and all of, these, all of these retail assistants would say to me, if you'd like to enter your pin, that's a yes. That's not a sentence. Either you complete the sentence, or I will. If you'd like to enter your pin, thank you. If you'd like to enter your pin, then I will get three wishes. If you'd like to enter your pin, then we'll have a nice date. I, I won't make face at you again. <laughs> so, having been banned from a couple of local supermarkets, I've given up on that one. Um, and then, and then, and then, there's, there's the rhetorical in, uh, questions, the instructions. So I went for this job interview. Strangely, didn't get it. Um, and the receptionist said to me, "Would you like to go upstairs, Jason?" Formal interview, so Jason, not Jay. Um, to which I said, without thinking, I said, I, I don't know, is it nice? <laughs> I, I, I went on holiday recently and also discovered that everybody was fixated by how well I slept. <laughs> now I've checked this. This rule only applies if I holiday in company. So I've, I've been on a, recently on a solo holiday. I'm glad you like this. On a solo holiday, and, and nobody was that bothered about how I slept. But in a communal holiday, it's good. Everybody, everybody was fascinated by how I slept. And I got grilled about six times a day for 14 days about how well I slept. I'm thinking, what's it got to do with you? I mean, I mean don't get me wrong. If you made the bed, if you were the carpenter and the upholsterer who made the bed, then it might concern you how well I slept. So anybody here make bed? Anybody in a, no? Okay, fine. Um, or if you were the chambermaid who made the bed without smelling it because that's creepy, then, then you might have a, a vested interest in how well I slept. But otherwise, you know, it'd be lunchtime. And because it has to be the first conversation of the day, I'd be being asked at 12, 1 o'clock, how did you sleep? Huh? What about all the lovely little freak that we're enjoying? That might like how I slept. Yeah, I'm just checking that I've covered everything I was going to whinge about. <laughs> oh no, I feel like I've forgotten something. Well, that's okay. I can end on a high note like that. So, thank you for being here. <laughs>